Welcome to this Arnold Culliford Knitwear tutorial. I'm going to show you how to set up multiple round helical knitting. You can use this to create stripe patterns of any number of rounds that you would like. You just need to remember that you need a ball of yarn for each round in your stripe pattern. Multi-round helical stripes are covered in more detail along with lots of other stitch patterns in our ebook something new to learn about helical knitting, where you'll also find the patterns for these cowls and a number of other projects. If you'd like to find out more, visit our website, acknitwear.co.uk. This is a sample that's been knitted with helical stripes over a six round stripe pattern. And as you can see, there's no jog in the stripes whatsoever. When you work multi-round helical stripes, you need to have a ball of yarn for each round of your stripe pattern. And the main difference from traditional stripes that you'll notice as I'm turning around this sample is that at the beginning of the work, at each point in the knitting, you have a different start point for your helical stripes. So in traditional stripes, you'd have a whole band of dark grey, for example, at the bottom, and it would all be dark grey all the way around. Whereas in helical knitting, you have some parts of the knitting where there's dark grey at the bottom, and then in other parts of the knitting, there's the light grey and then the yellow. And what you then end up with is a spiral of stripe rather than bands of stripe. Here I've got a 40 stitch round that's been worked in rib and I've got one ball of yarn attached to the work. So this cuff has been worked in normal knitting with just one round. And what I'm now going to do is set up helical stripes and I'm going to show you how to set it up for a six round pattern, but it works for any multiple that you like. You just have to work where I've divided into six sections, you'd have to work with the number of sections that's equal to the number of rounds in your stripe pattern. So I've got 40 stitches and in order to divide it into six sections, then my sections are either six or seven stitches long. It doesn't matter if your sections of stitches aren't exactly the same length, they just have to be roughly equal. Because if you started all of your uh, rounds of your stripe pattern at the start of the round marker, then you'd have a big step, a big jump of six rounds as the spiral started. So what you have to do is spread them out and start them at different points in the round so that they can then all swirl round from the one point. So I've divided up my round with these markers and I've kind of color coded my markers a bit. The blue ones are where I start working with my dark gray. The pale green markers are where I start work with my pale grey and the yellow marker is where I'm going to start work with my yellow yarn. And the first job is to start all of my spirals. So I'm going to do that by knitting one section in each of the yarns. So my first yarn is already attached and I'm going to work up to this marker in my first colour. What you will discover is that as you work, the yarns build up on top of each other. And what that means is that you need to join in your yarns in the opposite order to how you want them to appear in the fabric. So here, my last yarn is going to be the yellow. So it's going to go dark grey, light grey, yellow. That's the order in which I'm knitting them into this first round. But in the fabric, you'll see that it appears yellow, light grey, dark grey. Look at that again. Yellow, light grey, dark grey. So I'm going to knit them in as dark grey, light grey, yellow. But as they build on top of each other, that translates to the opposite order as you look from the bottom of the fabric to the top of the fabric. So there's my first yarn and now I'm using my second yarn to knit the second section of stitches. And 
and then I'm joining in my third yarn for the third section of stitches. And now I've come to the light green marker so I know that I'm going to join in my pale grey yarn. And another pale green marker, so another ball of pale grey yarn. So I'm knitting the pale grey yarn to the end of that section and now I've come to the yellow marker so I'm joining in my yellow yarn. I'm just going to stop one stitch before the end of the round so that you can see how we've got everything set up. So I've now almost completed that first round. We've got the first yarn has been worked across the first section, second yarn across the second section, third yarn is here worked across the third section and then we've got two sections of pale grey and one of yellow at the end. When we come to the end of that first round we're then going to establish our helical working pattern. So we're going to carry on working with that final yarn, in this case it's yellow, and we're going to knit until we are three stitches from the next yarn. When I magic loop I always leave a couple of stitches on the right needle so that I don't get a tension hiccup where I change needles. So that's all I've done there. So I am now three stitches from the next yarn. There's the next yarn attached to that last stitch in the section and I've got three stitches remaining. So I'm not going to knit those three stitches. I'm just going to slip them to the right hand needle. And then I'm going to drop the yellow yarn I was working with and pick up the dark grey. And I'm now going to knit until I'm three stitches before the next yarn, which is hiding in here. Obviously, if you're working multi round stripes and you have more than one round in a colour, you do need to just keep an eye out to make sure you don't knit over the end of your yarn. When all colours are different, it's much easier to see where each colour ends because the cut stitches change colour but when they're the same you have to pay a little bit more attention but if you do knit over the end you just have to tink back it's not a not a big problem so I'm three stitches there from the end I've slipped them across drop the grey yarn I was working with and pick up the next one Now this is actually quite a small circumference to have six balls of yarn attached to and as you can see I'm only knitting a few stitches each time before I'm doing my helical yarn change, slipping three and picking up the next colour. So what you can decide to do in this sort of situation is actually not to leave three stitches each time but instead to work to the last two. And on a small circumference, even just working one more stitch each time does actually make quite a big difference because in the round, that's an extra six stitches you've worked rather than slipped. So here we go with two stitches before the yarn change. At the moment, that helical yarn change is happening at the marker. There's my new yarn. So at the moment it's happening at the marker, but that's just because it's the first round and that will change once we've worked a few more rounds. 
So here I'm going to work to the last two and slip them across. And then I'm dropping the yarn I was working up, working with, picking up the new yarn. You'll notice here that I've got a longer section of stitches to work along in the yellow. And that's always the case that you'll have one section that's slightly longer than the others. Oops. Whilst I'm using the magical loop, magic loop method here, this method for working multi-round helical stripes works with any kind of needle. So you can do short circulars, double points, anything you want, two circular needles, magic loop, it's all fine. So there's the next yarn, and we're just going to work until we're a couple of stitches before the end. And then we slip them. And when you slip the stitches, you're just doing it so that you can reach that next yarn. You're not, you're not slipping stitches for a slip stitch effect in your fabric. You're just moving along to the next end of yarn. So it's actually quite rhythmic once you get into the swing of it. And you can see when you look at the back, there's no yarn being carried along the back. When you work a stitch, it's always next to the previous stitch in that colour. Helical yarn change onto the next yarn. And we carry on. And you can sort of see where the next yarn's sitting because you always get a bit of a gap at that point. And as long as you're tensioning your yarn correctly as you move on to working with that new yarn, then you're not going to actually get a gap in your knitting. So you can begin to see, just need to tighten up the first stitch in each of those where we joined it in. Once the ends are woven in, you can see that the spirals are beginning to form there. And once you've knitted on with it, that's the same section, that's how it'll appear. You will notice that the more rounds you have in your pattern, the more those rounds will slant. If you work over a larger number of stitches, it won't slant as much, but over a small circumference, like we have here with 40 stitches, there is a fair bit of lean in the rounds. They do, uh, they do work uphill a little bit. That's part of the appeal. It's a spiral of stitches. It isn't, a, it isn't bands. I hope you now feel confident setting up multi-round helical stripe patterns. You can find out more about all the projects in Something New to Learn about Helical Knitting over on our website acknitwear.co.uk where you'll also find our yarn, Something to Knit with Aaron, which is used in all the projects in our ebook. Thanks ever so much for watching.